Welcome, my beautiful people, to another episode of Dino Basics, where we dig up the basics on some of our favorite deceased beasts. My name is Logan, and today, to round out the year, we'll be looking into the sauropod that what it lacks in size makes up for in style. Thank you to Luke Hoffman 8101 for today's topic, the Amargosaurus. Amargosaurus would first be discovered in 1984 by Argentine paleontologist Guillermo Rogier, while working with fellow Argentine paleontologist Jose Bonaparte. This specific expedition was actually funded by the National Geographic Society and was meant to increase our knowledge of life in South America during the Jurassic and Cretaceous periods. The expedition that discovered Amargosaurus would be based in the Niaoquien province in modern-day Argentina. While this original specimen would be the only fossil of Amargosaurus ever found, it was remarkably complete, including much of the body, legs, and tail, and even a partial fragment of the skull, a rarity among sauropods. The same year of its discovery, in 1984, Amargosaurus would be informally mentioned by Bonaparte in the Italian book Suchet Orme de Dinosauri. Bonaparte would name the species different than how we know it today, giving it the species name Amargosaurus groberi, with the species name honoring German geologist Pablo Grober. It wouldn't be until 1991 that Amargosaurus would receive an official description, authored by Bonaparte and fellow paleontologist Leonardo Salgado. In this description, they would choose a different species name, leaving Grober without a dinosaur named after him. Instead, the pair would choose the name Kazawi to honor a different geologist named Luis Kazau, who encouraged Bonaparte and his team to first dig at the original excavation site leading to the discovery of Amargosaurus. As for the genus name for Amargosaurus, the ending Soros would obviously translate to lizard. The beginning, Amarga, could be translated to bitter in Spanish, but more accurately references the location La Amarga Arroyo, the location of the original dig site, or the name of the nearby town La Amarga, Amargosaurus was a Saurischian or lizard-hipped dinosaur and was a member of the sauropod family. It's been a while since we last looked at sauropods, but sauropods were a group of dinosaurs that included some of the largest terrestrial animals to ever walk the earth, including titans like the Brachiosaurus and Apatosaurus. More specifically, Amargosaurus was a member of the Dicryosauridae, a smaller classification of sauropods often organized by their comparatively short necks and overall smaller size when compared to other sauropods. Like other members of this grouping, while Amargosaurus was certainly large compared to many other dinosaurs and especially animals today, it was on the smaller side of sauropods overall. It would have measured between 30 to 40 feet, or 9 to 12 meters in length, and reach a height of approximately 9 feet, or 3 meters. Based on this size, it would have weighed between 3 to 4 tons. Its head was fairly small, and despite its long neck, would be kept fairly close to the ground. A 2014 study by Paulina Carabajal concluded that based on a scan of the partial skull, rather than having the head be directly horizontal of the neck, it would have been angled at a 65 degree angle towards the ground, possibly defining what they would have eaten. Most likely, low-lying bushes and debris from taller trees. To eat, Amargosaurus would use its dozens of pin-like teeth to tear leaves and strip plants. This head would be balanced on its 8 foot or 2 meter long neck, which, while long, was comparatively shorter than many other sauropods. This neck would also be the location of Amargosaurus's most striking feature, 
they're spike-like neural spines. These spikes would start just behind the skull and extend all the way to just above their hips and were bifurcated or formed two rows of these notched spikes. The remaining neural vertebrae from just above their hips to their tails were also elongated but were not bifurcated and ended in a more paddle-like shape. These neck spines were as incredible as they were confusing. Scientists today are still unsure what the point of these spines were, and even how they would appear on the animal. For simplicity, we'll discuss the purpose of these spikes alongside the two proposed appearances. One being the appearance of the standalone spikes. This was first proposed in the original description by Salgado and Bonaparte in 1991, noting how these spikes would serve a mainly defense purpose. Additional scientists would corroborate this belief, arguing these spines could be used as weapons against predators, shown off for intimidation, or even as some weird living wind chimes, being rattled together to ward off threats. A study by Mark Hallett and Matthew Weddle would further expand on this belief, comparing these spines to the horns of modern antelope and oryx, noting how these animals would use their backward spikes to fight carnivores like lions. However, this theory is not perfect. For one, some argue these spines would not be strong enough to be used as weapons, even if covered in a keratin sheath, meaning animals stabbed by these spikes or simply grabbing onto them would easily be able to snap them off, causing unnecessary damage to a margosaurus. Another issue relates to their attachment to the neural vertebrae, as if these spikes are broken or simply have too much pressure placed on them, they would put unnecessary pressure on the spinal cord and possibly sever it killing the animal. The rival theory argues that these spikes would be connected by a sail-like structure. Jack Bailey in 1997 would popularize this theory by drawing connections to Dimetrodon and certain pelicosaurs, arguing these sails could be used for thermoregulation or display. Daniela Schwarz in 2007 would further expand on this sail theory arguing this skin could be connected to the lungs and allow air sacs to help oxygenate their large bodies. However, detracting from this theory is the idea of mobility, as a proposed sail of skin would be extremely fragile, and simply turning or bending their necks would risk tearing this skin. The most recent study on this subject written by paleontologist Ignacio Cerda in 2022, seems to add validity to this sail theory, as his study would find a keratin sheath unlikely due to the growth marks in the spines, further taking away from the idea that these spines could be used as weapons. More significant was the discovery of Sharpie's fibers in the spines. These fibers would allow the growth of skin ligaments from the tips of their spikes to the base of their necks and bodies, not unlike the proposed skin sails of earlier theories. Despite this discovery, questions on why the skin even existed and how durable it would have been still remain. Today, depictions of this creature are often split between the sailed and non-sailed spines of a margosaurus. Their bodies would have been fairly small and bulky, and due to the existence of extended dorsal vertebrae on their backs, possibly would have had a short hump running above their shoulders to the beginning of their tail. The body was supported by four column-like legs. Some argue that sauropods were capable of balancing on their hind limbs to reach higher plants or fend off predators. However, this seems unlikely for a margosaurus. These legs, due to their short length and bulky build, were unlikely to help the animal run, but some have suggested they could help the animal gallop to reach higher speeds, 
similar to modern-day white rhinos. To counterbalance its body, a Margosaurus would have had a long tail, although significantly shorter than most other sauropods. A Margosaurus would have lived in the early Cretaceous, almost 130 million years ago. It would have roamed throughout South America, particularly in modern-day Patagonia. Yeah, that's a place! Not just the frat boy's vest of choice. It includes countries like southern Chile and Argentina. During the Cretaceous period, sauropods would slowly decline in prominence due to competition with other herbivores, particularly the hadrosaurs. In some regions, like South America, sauropods would continue to flourish in lush tropical environments. In order to avoid competition with larger sauropods, like Zapolosaurus and Amarga Titanus, Amargosaurus most likely would have feasted upon lower-lying plants, like shrubbery and fallen leaves, which is further supported by the previously mentioned 65-degree head placement. While their neck spines could arguably play a role in defense, it is more likely that Amargosaurus would have relied on its large size to avoid predation, as based on fossil records, very few carnivores could challenge a fully grown Amargosaurus. Although some carnivores native to the area, like Irritator and Geniodectes, could hunt younger, smaller Amargosaurus. With such an unmistakable appearance, Amargosaurus has been able to land a variety of roles in modern media. Some of these roles include a brief appearance in 2010's Bizarre Dinosaurs, as the first sauropod in the 2022 update of Path of Titans, and in various Jurassic Park games like 2012's Jurassic Park Builder, 2015's Jurassic World The Game, and 2021's Jurassic World Evolution 2, just to name a few. While these roles are already quite numerous, Children's media has been particularly generous to Amargosaurus, including roles like the 2005 animated series Dinosaur King, 2009's animated series Dinosaur Train, as well as being the inspiration of the Pokemon Amora and its evolution Aurorus, first appearing in the 2013 video game Pokemon X and Pokemon Y, which is a really cool design probably my favorite fossil po- second favorite fossil Pokemon design. While many questions still remain about Amargosaurus, what we do know is that this was a unique and powerful creature. With such a remarkable appearance, sail or no sail, this behemoth was truly a Mar, vol of its time. That's gonna do it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to leave a comment below what you think of Amargosaurus, and if you've heard of this dinosaur before the video. And that concludes Dino Basics for 2023. Be on the lookout for our community post on Monday to discuss our first month of Dino Basics for 2024. It's gonna be a little bit special. Thank you for your support, and see you in the next video.